Hi, I'm Adam with Channel Master. Today, I want to take you through and answer the question of how do I get power to my preamp when the preamp is located outside near my antenna and I actually have no power out there. So let's get started. We assume that we've already got our antenna mounted on a pole and now we're installing the preamp portion of our TV system. The preamp should be located as a best practice close to your antenna and use a short coaxial cable, RG6, uh, to go from the matching transformer on the antenna to the preamplifier's input, which is marked by antenna in when you're reviewing the instruction sheet. Now that we've got our short cable connected from our antenna's matching transformer to the preamp's input, the next cable that we're gonna connect in our system is the down lead. This is typically your longest cable run. This is the cable that's gonna run from the output of the preamp and typically maybe into an attic, or maybe it's just going basically, you know, uh, through a wall and running right to where you have a single TV set up in the house. But the point is, is that this cable is not only going to be sending the TV signals received by your antenna and then amplified down into the house, it's also going to be the cable that we apply power on and send back up to the amplifier, which is a confusing point for a lot of people, which is what I want to explain next. Now that we have our down lead that's gonna run from our uh, output of the preamp inside, secured to the amplifier and everything, it's time to install the power inserter. The power inserter itself is what's going to plug in to the wall and it is going to have a output to our TV, an input from this cable coming down from the amplifier, and an input from the power from the wall. The first thing we're gonna connect those from our down lead, we're gonna connect this to the port that says two amplifier. That signifies where our DC voltage is going to come off of the power inserter itself. The second connection that we're going to make on the power inserter is simply to power itself. Included with the preamp is a power supply, a, match, a, a transformer that takes AC from your wall outlet and converts it to DC at a 12 volt DC and we include also this six foot cable which is recommended to use to power the power inserter. All right, so now we're gonna power the power inserter or connect our power cable to it. And at this point, we can actually test exactly what we've got set up and make sure that DC is making its way all the way back up to the amplifier because at this point, with the power inserter connected to the down lead, again, coming from outside to the input on the power inserter, and then our power supply itself connected to the power input to the uh, power inserter with a simple plug-in on wall outlet. You can now see that I'm getting power signified by this LED that is on my preamplifier outside. Now, another cool thing about the preamp one that we're installing here is that it has a switch on the power inserter itself that allows you to toggle from a medium gain setting or low to high. When we go to high, you're gonna see a red LED illuminate on the preamp. Again, when we're in low, it's gonna be green. When it's in high, it's gonna be red. A lot of people think when they see red that it's bad. In this case, it's not bad. It simply means we're at that 30 dB of amplification that this amp offers. Now, now I've got everything connected. So if you can imagine that this down lead from the preamp is your longest cable, you've dressed it however you want to come in through the attic or through a wall, uh, a hole, whatever that is, we're connected to the input for the two amplifier uh, port on the power inserter. And then we have our power connected to the power in port on the power inserter. Our last connection is to finish the run from 
the power inserter to the TV. Now for this, I'm gonna unplug my power. Since I've confirmed that I'm getting power up to my preamp and I know I don't have any problems with my cabling or anything in between the preamp and this power inserter that could put possibly be blocking power to it. If I was blocking power to the preamp, I won't see any LED illuminate on the preamp itself. And I'll have to address somewhere in between or it's a bad connector or a bad cable. Um, we don't know what we can't see. So sometimes if you're you know, connecting this cable, which is common to another cable that runs indoors, there may be a problem. So these are the things we got to clear up. But for the purpose of this video and showing how to power this preamp, we're set now to finish our final connection with a short cable, typically, especially if we're connecting this right behind the TV. But the point is, is now our last connection is from the power inserters output that says two TV, and we're gonna connect that and the other end of it directly to the, to the, the coax port on our television. Okay, so once again, now that we've got everything connected and we've seen earlier that we're getting voltage all the way back up to the preamp and we're connected now with our final jumper from the power inserter to the TV itself, it's safe to plug power back in. Now that I have power plugged back in, the last thing to do in this installation is to go to the TV itself, navigate through the menus and scan for channels. Now, I wanna bring up a couple of points of what people get kind of mixed up a little bit every once in a while. First of all, if I'm not able, backing up a couple of steps to get power to my preamp and I'm not seeing my LED illuminate and I'm trying both settings from green to red with my power inserter, but nothing's happening. It means that something is causing that voltage to not make it from my power inserter, which is gonna be indoors, back up to the amplifier itself. Now, most commonly, what we find is that somewhere in between there, we've uh, connected to an existing cable that's run throughout the home and left behind by a satellite or a cable installation, there's a device called a splitter that's blocking this DC voltage. Now channel master splitters all pass DC voltage on all ports. So if you use a channel master splitter or replace that with a channel master splitter, no problem. You'll be able to get that DC voltage back up to the preamp without a problem. However, sometimes in some systems, people are using a second amplifier. And in a case where you're using a second amplifier, it's important to understand that if this amplifier is in between my preamp and my power inserter supplying the DC voltage to the preamp, it's going to block that. So if you're not getting the LED illuminated on your preamp, you need to go and trace that cable down and determine where it's connecting to something that could possibly be blocking the DC power that we're trying to send back up to the preamp. Once you clear these things up, your system should be functioning fully at 100%. As long as you've got good quality cables, you shouldn't be losing any extra signal or anything like that. And again, return to the TV at that point and scan for channels and you should be good to go. For this installation, I know there's a couple of things you kind of have to imagine, right? We're not, we're doing the whole thing right here indoors, but again, your antenna and your preamp are always going to be located outside on some sort of a mast, pole, pipe, whatever you're using. Um, you're going to secure your cables uh, to the preamp. Preamp comes with an optional mast mounting bracket to make it really simple for you. And again, the key is, is we're using the power inserter appropriately indoors and we don't have anything on our longer cable in between that power inserter and the preamp itself. Thanks for tuning in and I hope this really helps you understand exactly how to power the preamp one and how to use the power inserter indoors applying power to it as well.